everyone. Welcome to the Cage Siders. I'm Jeremy Long, along with my co-host, as always, the coach, Angelo Reyes, everyone. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we got a full house of non-existent people cheering him on. That's coach, right. good to see you as always, man. We had, uh, you know, we have a, a fun show lined up. Yeah, Stitch Duran is going to join us later on in the show. Yeah. Talk everything. You know, the man's flying all over the world. He's on every fight fight card imaginable. No, both boxing and MMA. And right. here, here's the cool thing. Uh, we got a chance to go to the Mayweather Boxing Gym and hang out there for the day. Uh, we got some inside scoop on some stuff, and we'll be uh, airing it little by little. You guys, we're going to air some uh, on today's show and kind of show you some of the things that uh, we got to do over there at the Mayweather Boxing Gym. So, oh, cool. fun stuff. Fun yeah, stuff. absolutely. Well, before we get into all that, let's talk about the uh, UFC OKC card uh, headlined by Michael uh, Kessa. 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 There we go. Michael Kessa. I'm so sorry. I ruined your name. And then Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee. Uh, controversial finish there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then his arms go I'm like, his arms <laughs> like this. Yeah. Like right. this. Uh, all I know is Mario Yamasaki's getting blown the yeah, hell up. True. You know, he's being blamed for a lot of this. Two seconds either way of his actual stoppage probably would have caused, you know, two seconds more. We may have gotten a definitive answer on whether Kiesa was going out right or uh, if he was going to tap right uh two seconds before would have been too soon right people would have been even more furious right damn you Mario Yamasaki <laughs> and your heart and all right. that stuff uh but overall thoughts of the card real quick yeah no I I mean with with that, with that being said I thought that uh you know he was in the choke the the, the hardest reason I think why people are going, oh man, it might have been too early, is because they just, on the same card, saw Justin Kish be on a full on choke by Felice Herrig, and Felice Herrig was, uh, uh, Justin Kish was able to break out of it somehow. So I guess you're thinking five round main event, hey man, could, uh, you know, could, could you have given him a chance? Truthfully, though, no, I kind of agree with Kevin Lee. It's like, Dog, for like another 30 um, seconds, you're just going to get beat up some more. So, you know, I think it was a good win for Kevin Lee. I thought they did a great job hyping it up. Me, personally, I would rather see Kevin Lee versus Ferguson again. But sure, if you guys want to run it again, uh, Kevin Lee is young, he's strong, he's hungry. Uh, I like him, man. I like him. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of the immediate rematch right there. You know, these guys are uh, really young. You know, they can do it again down the road, but I don't think anyone's banging down the door to see this one again. But Ferguson, Kevin Lee. But Ferguson, Kevin Lee. Yeah, and they kind of had a, a verbal yeah. spar on, uh, you know, the post, uh, post fight yeah. you know, show and everything. So that's interesting. It was a strange card from top to bottom. Yeah, we saw, no, I mean, Hendricks know, didn't make way. Yeah, we see Hendricks, you know, moves up, uh, you know, a, a while back because he keeps missing weight at a welterweight, moves up to middleweight. Right. Misses weight again, then gets TKO'd <sighs> by Tim Boach. Uh, Clay Guida throws a oh, sweet scorpion, kick. Cor the scorpion cool. kick landed, you know, that good, was cool. good fun. We saw the, uh, yeah, Felice Herring, you know, Felice Herring, uh, do her thing, yeah, you know, just and then fish. after the fight, she, she broke down and was yeah. kind of like, I think she know, was being honest. I'm on the wrong side of 30. I'm right. not, I'm not as pretty as some other fighters like, you know, Paige well, Van Zandt, something like that. You're pretty. You're definitely a very attractive young lady. Uh, so, you know, you know, then, you know, overall, man, Fun, fun card. Yeah, I'm, I'm I like the Marco was... Reyes kid. Am I saying that right, Reyes? He got the knockout. Uh, Dominique. Oh, that... Dominique Reyes. Oh yeah, well, yeah, the kid who debuted for UFC. Yeah, no, that was awesome. And he's coming From off Victorville. Of, yeah, yeah he's awesome. coming off. Uh, yeah. You know, just a few weeks ago, was fighting on uh, Legacy. Okay, they've got a KO there. So very strange card. I'm glad it was free. Yeah, let me say that. Yeah, a lot of a lot of news being made about Justine Kish. Uh, you know, and, it happens. You know, look, man, like when you're Crap fighting, happens. Yeah, well. Beep happens. Look, you know? when you're fighting that hard, all I'll say is, like, she fought her her, her, her her tail off there. And, um, you know, stuff like that happens. And I think people just need to know. It happens. Just happens. <laughs> what <do you laughs> what else can you she say about it? There. What else? But you know what? Know your, know your, uh, know your audience, MMA media, because those, those stories about her pooping in the ring Not a real are, story. are completely <laughs> blowing up. While the other card, you know, the card is really kind of being overlooked. Right, right, You know, right. but not too much movement. It wasn't significant either way. I mean, you could argue, you know, the lightweights with uh, Kevin Lee and, and Kiesa. You could argue the mute movement there for their top yeah, 15 the rankings and stuff like that, top 10 rankings. Yeah. But for the most part, it was kind of one of those, I don't want to say throwaways, but nah, throw it away. is what it is. Yeah. So we're going to take our first commercial break. 
When we come back, we're going to talk to the man, the man of the hour, Stitch Duran. Stay with us. The coach, Jeremy Long, with the Cage Siders. We'll be right back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long, along with the coach, Angelo Reyes. And now we have in studio one of our absolute favorite guest of all time, Stitch Duran. Stitch, thank you so much for uh, joining us again, man. Thank you, God. I requested that, didn't I, Angelo? I said, man, you know, <laughs> you guys only gave me like 15 minutes last time. I said, you know, I'm not accustomed to that, man. You know, uh, man, I had to so come much back. Time. <laughs> yeah, you guys have a good good show here, man. There's a lot of good things going on, but it's, it's a pleasure Appreciate being Appreciate it, man. Well, you're really in the center of everything that's combat sports. It's so been crazy. So for, for this segment, I want to focus on the boxing. You were just on the corner of the Andre Ward versus uh, Kovalev. Uh, Ward, of course, wins by uh, TKO. I was there for the fight. I had great seats. I thought it was a really good battle. Yeah. I'm a little sad at how the ending went, but I thought he was going to knock him out anyway. So kind of take us through that one. The feeling of, I mean, now it's hard to argue that Andre Ward is not the pound for pound best because he just beat, I mean, he slayed yeah, the guy yeah. that supposedly had beaten him on the last one. So talk us through that whole event leading up to it. How was Andre feeling in the locker room? You know, what, what are some of the things that Stitch, that only Stitch Duran can uh, tell us? Ah, you're getting the scoop again, huh? That's why you brought me on. Huh, that's it. That's what so uh, anyway, let me start off from the end, you know, in, in the seventh round. I, I'm getting Andre and I'm sitting him down and, you know, I got like three seconds to say anything if I do say anything. And I said, man, you're breaking him just like Rocky did Ivan Drago, you know. <laughs> and uh, but leading up to that uh, at the press conference, uh, I was there and, you know, Andre's in good shapes and Kovalov is this, that. And uh, I'm walking towards the uh, area where the conference is at, at the Mandalay Bay, and Jaron is coming and he wants to ask me questions. So we're walking and he's asking about the thing with John David Jackson and the Ward team. And I said, I don't know anything about it. You tell me, you know, I normally I don't get in people's business, you know, and uh, but I guess there was some kind of back and forth talking, you know, on the mind game, that type of thing. And I won't get involved in that. So uh, but the press conference went well when Kovalov did his thing. The whole team just took off, except Kathy Duva. She just kind of sitting there all by herself. <laughs> you know, I felt sorry for her, man. And, and then you got James Prince that comes in, and nobody's going to out-talk him. Uh, he's going to outsmart you just verbally. Uh, Virgil Hunter comes in with the same ammunition, right? And and uh, they just kind of blasted him big time, man. I'm thinking, oh, gee, you know. So uh, I do an interview for HBO, um, the podcast. And John David Jackson is next, so I'm getting up, and the guy said, "No, no, both the guys stayed down." So they they brought that up, and you know, like I said, I mean, I've known John David Jackson for years, and he's always respected me. Uh, I ain't got a dog in this fight. I don't care what happens, you know. He, as long as he treats me with respect, that's how we go. Huh. You know, so so that went well. The weigh-ins went well, and then uh, the dressing room. I get in there, and uh, you know, it's time to start wrapping Andre Ward and. Uh, I start wrapping them, and there's always somebody from the other corner that comes right. to the corner for championship fights to inspect and make sure everything's within the guidelines. Right. And, and uh, so uh, that was Don Turner, legendary oh, okay. man that came down, right? So uh, I did my stuff, and then Andre, of all the fights I've ever done with him, he's never said stitch. They always send somebody else, but he says, I want you to go over there and watch him rap. So, wow, yeah, so, okay. so I had finished you know, earlier than them, number one, which made it possible, and a lot of times we're rapping at the same time, so it's not possible if this one was. Right. So I get in there and uh, and they start wrapping hands, and you know I can see it's I've done a lot better, right? <laughs> so it's to the point where Kovalov is undoing his gauze, right? And okay. and they just can't get the wraps the way he wants them, and okay. they get them, and he's trying to adjust the gauze and bring it down. So you know that's taking time and and uh, from him warming up, and then so I take off, and when they put the gloves on, then somebody inspects. So I went back and. And uh, well, before that, Tony Weeks is giving the instructions, and okay. I'm there watching, right? And and he's giving the instructions. Is anybody you have any questions? You go, yeah, you know, Andre comes in with his shoulder here. Last time, and he hurt me, you know. Huh. Boom. So all right. So then he time to put the gloves on, and he's putting them on. The right hand don't fit. It's too big. Wow. So they have to get. They always have a second pair. So they have to get the second pair, but it's at ringside. So that's taking time. That's taking time. And by the end of the night, before, as he puts his gloves on, Tammy, the coordinator for HBO, says, you're walking in five minutes. That's, that's the time schedule. Wow. So what do I do? I go next door and I say, Andre, 
this man's going in cold, man. You only have five minutes to warm up. And then he mentioned to Tony Weeks about the shoulder that you heard him there, boom. So I think I just reinforced what him and Virgil had been training throughout for the camp. And, right. And, um, and he did it. You know? Wow, man. Yeah. It's so cool to hear it from, from your perspective, too, because you're like the fly on the wall. Yeah, and well, I was you're there. Not, you know, you were, yeah. you know, you were uh, there. I definitely and, was there. Yeah, yeah. no, and, and that's what, what I mean is because I thought in watching the fight, there were ebbs and flows in every round of mm -hmm. things that were happening, but you could tell they both were ready to fight each other. Oh, it was and a And they were fight. bringing juice, yeah. man. Like, yeah. there were jabs when Andre hit him. I was like, oh, I, I think I felt that, yeah. you know, right there. And and I, I would say, well, well, you know, they weighed in at 175, but would you say conservatively Andre was at least 185 going into fight night? Maybe. I, man, I, now you're having me guess, and, and I might guess as good as yeah. yours because. You know, I do the weigh-in. I go home. Yeah, I'll see, no, I'll see they, in the dressing room. Really look, they but they all look, do it. Yeah, they yeah. all they all hydrate and you know they all get a, a nice meal. You know, definitely for dinner and definitely for breakfast and maybe something you know light for lunch. So you know, ten pounds is feasible. No yeah. doubt about it. You know? Yeah, no, and, and, and uh, it, uh, they were super strong on it. Um, I know at the end, Max Kellerman even said, "Hey, I believe you're the best pound for pound fighter in the world." So when we talked about it on our past show, we were saying what would be next for him and you know stage this is a money making game sure. and andre doesn't have anything to prove gold medalist he yeah. just slayed yeah. the, that guy so it's like now well the super, even if you were the, a, the, the super six tournament yeah, the super also six tournament, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, but even right. if you if you doubted him before you can't doubt him now right so now that you can't doubt him in my head i'm like i don't know where he would make the most money now i heard a rumor just don't know if it's true or not wondering if you would know Maybe a Ward Kovalev three in Russia and Andre gets paid something like between ten and fifteen million. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because at at the end of the first fight, right, uh, I, I'm walking into the ring and I'm telling Don Ames, uh, one of the corner guy, the guy that works inside, I said, "Man, don't be surprised if there's a trilogy." Uh -huh. You know, and okay. and uh, I I could see that. You know, I think that'd be both good for both of them. And then to go into Russia, you know, would 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 be uh, God, that's good. I, I'm in. Yeah. Right. I I like it. Yeah. That's the I, way. That, that's I the like way to end a boxing segment, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's how, that's how you do that. Because yeah. we're, I mean, like like you mentioned, we're, we're kind of hearing chatter that they may pull off a trilogy and do it in You're Russia. All for it. Oh, I'm in. But you know, it's funny. I've I've been to Moscow three times with Klitschko, and twice actually. And the first time I went there, we were staying at the Hyatt across from Red Square, so I'm checking out. Google and it's, it's a badass place, man. So I get there and, and I'm looking. I say, oh yeah, it's beautiful. And they say, oh sorry, Mr. Duran. You know, they uh, let's go move this camp to another hotel. Man, this hotel was like 10 miles outside of town. It was like the shiny. There was nobody there but us, man. Oh, I was so pissed. I never saw the two times I've been there. I've never seen, never, never seen Moscow. All right, oh, wow. definitely don't go to that hotel. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, we're gonna cut to a commercial real quick. Yeah. We come back. We're still gonna be joined by Stitch. We're gonna talk a little Bellator. And uh, we're going to have some more fun. All right. Stay with us. Kate Siders will be right back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Jeremy Long along with the coach, Angelo Reyes, Stitch Duran in studio with us now. So let's turn our focus. We're talking about boxing and the things like that. Let's talk to uh, Bellator. You were there, you know, Bellator 180 and, uh, the, of course, the pay-per-view. Sure. Uh, man, number one, show overall, just your opinion of it. How do you think it went? Uh, no, I think it went well, you know, for Bellator doing their first pay-per-view. Right. Uh, it was very smooth running, which was nice, you know, and there's one fight after another and, and uh, everything backstage was organized and, you know, the fans were happy. They got there early, right. you know, so I, I was happy for Scott. You know, I've known Scott for many, many years from uh, the Bay Area when my fighters used to fight under his card right. before Strike Force. And I, it really hurt my heart when Fedor was supposed to fight Matt in San Jose and right. that's his home basically my home too and and that fight falls off right at the weigh-ins right. uh but this was vindication for scott coker and and bellator and you know what makes it even funny is so many people in the audience were they were so excited that they were they were saying how the scales are tipping now where bellator is becoming a uh, way more favorable Ooh, yeah. company than the ufc yeah. so um that's not a bad thing to stand on yeah no i agree because when i watched the show and i know on our podcast we uh, you know we were we were talking about it it was this a good show i said if i didn't know anything about mma and i just turned it on i thought it was very entertaining 
from the bottom all the way to the top. There was a lot of drama. There was a lot of different things that was happening. There's good action. If you're an MMA purist, you saw some really good high-level stuff. And then if you're just kind of like, oh, I kind of heard of that Chael Sonnen guy. Yeah, I kind of yeah. heard of that Vanderlei Silva guy. Still, I thought, you know, Chael Sonnen's entertaining. You know, like when he, yeah. oh, when he talks and, and stuff like that. So your takeaway from being there, being a part of this historic Madison Square Garden event, what was some of your favorite parts? Well, my favorite parts is me going back. You know, my book from the <laughs> fields to the garden. You know, my ultimate goal was to make it to the garden, and I've been there for now both boxing and MMA. I was there uh, New Year's Eve for the World Series of Fighting and MMA, so I've done them both. Uh, so for me, it's very historical, but uh, just to be there to have Fedor, number one, uh, which was cool, and you know, let me give you a little insight. I'm I'm on the plane, man. I'm heading up. I just sit down on the plane, and you know, I'm put my head my, my, my plug in my phone to listen to some music and the phone goes off and I turn it off it's Jerry Millen so I call him back and and he's hey Stitch how you doing hold on somebody wants to say hi and it's Fedor hey Stitch how you doing Fedor I said man yeah I said, what am I doing you know what thing, what is this you know you coming I say yeah, I'll be there good you know and so I'm thinking, wow, you know, what a way to start a journey to wow. New York, wow. right? So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, yeah. Well, what did you, how, what were you thinking when the double knockdown happened? You know what? I, I was preparing. I, I never saw it, and I, okay. I didn't buy the pay per view, so I didn't see it. But people were oh. talking about a double knockout, you know. Okay. And I, so I'm getting my stuff ready, and boom, you know, he's down. Oh you know? wow! And, okay. Uh, so. so I missed it, man. So I'm. I should be looking for some replay somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you can find them. Yeah. It's a, yeah, yeah, you can find yeah. them it's a crazy moment. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm thinking that we're going to have the replay. We look at it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And now talking about, uh, you know, we kind of mentioned in our break here, talking about Michael Chandler and yeah. his, his ankle injury and things like that. You know, from from your point of view, what does that what does that look? I mean, is that a does it take any legitimacy away from Brett uh, Primus being you know, the champ? From you know being the champ. Uh, it, yeah, that's a good question. I have to think about that. Now, you know, a champion's a champion, and, we, you know, we all know in this game, all it takes is one shot to change the course of the game. Right. You know, so, you know, you're asking me a question. I said, I always prefer pre prepare for the worst-case scenario, right. and that's, that's a worst-case scenario. It happens. Right. So you have to accept it, you know, accept the chips where they fall. Right, right. No, that, and uh, how about... I know uh, there there was the woman's card earlier, but then the Aaron Pico thing, and we talked about this yeah, too. We did. I thought everybody's being a little hard on the kid yeah. because he fought a very good uh, Zach Freeman, right? It wasn't like some bum or somebody that's just going to get beat up. And again, you put so much hype into that kid. In a way, uh, John Morgan said it to us too. He said, it's almost good that he lost because now the pressure's off. Just go out and be yourself. What did you think of that, Stitch? Uh, well, I was, I was totally surprised. <laughs> Number one, I, I worked his uh, his fight. I, I went in to wrap his hands. He that was by special request from him and and his father. And so you know, I'm in there wrapping his hands, and he's all excited. And and I'm about three quarters done with one. With the last one, the fire we have this one wrapped, uh, and about three quarters done with this one. The commission says, uh, "Stitch, you got to take him off." And I'm saying, "Why?" You know, I said, "Well, he has to go take a drug test." And that's what. Can he do it with his wraps? Because now you got to cut them off. Huh. So I had to cut them off, and you know now there's a time frame, right? Because I'm going to be working the Phil Davis fight, and and but he's gone like 20 minutes, man. And uh, you know it would take me 15 to wrap a hand, so I would have time. But once you start getting to 20, 25 minutes, then uh, it took way too long to take a drug test. Number one, uh, he comes <laughs> in, and I just don't have the time. So you know through training, he's been wrapping his own hands. So I left him the equipment, the the gauze and tape and scissors for him uh, to wrap his hands. But that kind of threw it off right here right for him right from okay. there it started off on a negative note okay yeah I see and but, but, like but but he took that uppercut man and that's you know that's the one that dropped Klitschko yes uppercut is devastating yeah he just took an uppercut that's happens right Stitch? absolutely it's four one ounce shot. gloves I mean yeah. this was my whole point about yeah. even the Mayweather McGregor which we want to yeah. just get your quick thought on but <laughs> this was my whole point was that if it was four ounce gloves yes anything is possible yeah. the minute you start increasing it though it's a little bit harder, but getting hit is getting hit. Oh, yeah. Now, listen, you get hit with eight or ten ounce gloves with that uppercut. It's yeah. A, look at Klitschko. Oh, yeah. Klitschko. Right. That's, you right. Know, yeah. I tell you, it's all yeah. hitting the bump. And, and unlike in boxing where he would have gotten an eight count and would have had a chance to survive it, no, you know, no, it's, they, a fight, it's a they, MMA they fight. They and then the guy on got, got him on a guillotine right away, and, and yeah. that was the close. Yeah, so, right. um, so moving on, before we end, just real fast, Mayweather McGregor. Oh, God. Your thoughts, uh, real quick. You know, it's going to be uh, – the, the hype is definitely going to be bigger than the fight. I think, you know, the hype is obvious. You know, I went to the Ward-Kovalov fight, and uh, I did like 10 interviews, 
and none of them were about Ward and Kovalov. They were all about Mayweather and, <laughs> and McGregor because, you know, I'm one of the few guys that have been in both sports. But uh, either way, man, I, I'd be happy just to have a ticket to be there, better yet, to work one of the undercards. You know, so, uh, you know, just it's like the old Tyson days, man. When he used to fight, it used to be a circus in itself within the hotel. And right. I think we're going to find that. So if, uh, just to end this, McGregor says, stitch the rim, I want you to work my corner. Yes? Be a smart man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, right. mic drop. There we go. That's, there that's you how go. you end it. Call him, Connor. You need it. <laughs> yeah, you need all the help you can get. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll get it. That's me just saying Well, you that. choked, man. No, love, man. I did. I choked. No, I choked Jeremy myself. choked, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to toss our next commercial break. When we come back, more Stitch Duran. Stay with us, and I'll get the frog out of my throat. Welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long, along with the coach. Angelo Reyes, forgot your name for a second there. I know, what is <laughs> up with you and the frog, dude? Uh, I'm, I'm in the presence of greatness. I'm That's true, man. That's true. Right. Sure. Right. Sure. Right. Blame it on me, huh? Yeah, chopping it up, man. So, like, you know, very quickly, man, what's uh, next for you? What's yes. your next trip out? Yeah. Uh, I, Thursday, I head off to Daytona for the what used to be the World Series of Fighting. It's the Professional Fight League now. Uh, and then uh, July 14th, I do uh, Thackerville. Uh, for Bellator, and then from there I fly straight to LA to work with Joe Smith that's fighting uh, uh, Sullivan Barrera. Wow. Sullivan so, Barrera, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, and we know you, of course, have your own uh, wraps and stuff like that. Where yeah. can people uh, find and shop for yourself? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I get my Stitch Premium wraps at uh, stitchdurand.com. And then uh, the book from the fields to the garden one and two at amazon.com. Cool, there cool, cool. And then the eighty sixers brand. And the eighty sixers, yeah. That's the clothing, yep, right? Yep. The eighty sixers dot com or dot net. All right, cool, yeah. cool, cool. I'm man. liking it, man. Yeah, no, old Stitch is a brand in himself. I, <laughs> yeah. I always say it's like you know, there's there's everyone else, and then there's Stitch Duran, you know. So uh, <laughs> boxing, MMA, uh, everything heart, actually, man. everything. I thought, well, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for joining us oh, and yes. for sharing stories. I know it's not. An hour and a half long show, and it should be, especially when we have Stitch on there. <laughs> but, man, we really do appreciate your time and you taking time out and coming. Oh, it's fun. It's fun, man. It's like barbershop talk. Right, right, right. And so your, your daughter's still happy. Everything's good. All right, right? everybody. Right, yeah, we don't have happy. to go beat up that. Yeah, no, 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 right. Okay, yeah. But watch yourself, man. <laughs> right. Keep her happy. Yeah, homie, yeah. We got a crew here. Well, for everyone here at the Action Channel and everyone here on Cage Siders, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Subscribing to our podcast. And uh, all their other good stuff. Listen to Angel ye uh, yell, you know, in into the microphone and everything else. Like he does every single week. So join us here each and every Friday. We'll see you next time. We are the Cage Siders.